thanks a lot, sir. And uh, at the outset, uh, I I do welcome all members, uh, panelists who are on this show. We're going to have this nice dialogue on where the world is going and where India is going, where China is going, Russia is going, and where US is going. Right. Uh, uh, we'll wait for Brigadier uh, Romel Dahir to join. I think he's having some problems in joining in. Uh, when he joins in, we'll get his viewpoint, but then we'll start the whole uh, show. But when when we start the whole show, the whole story is about balance of power. In the last century, the balance of power was between USA, China, and USSR, then USSR. Then came the Cold War, right? USSR got replaced by Russia, but and Russia virtually fell out of the equation. China was still... Uh, a, a poor nation at that point of time, though it was a powerful nation, it was a powerfully poor nation. And it, we went into a unipolar world. And then from a unipolar world, at the turn of the century, we started seeing the dawn of something between a multipolar and a bipolar world. Right. But everything was going hunky-dory. Till such time, the way I look at it, till such time, uh, a, a Chinese you know, guy put out this particular cartoon. And this came from the South China Morning Post. And it set us thinking, rethinking about where the world order is. And this is very clear. As per him, the four heavyweights of the world are India, uh, Russia, China, and uh, USA. Many people in the West don't consider it so. But this is where it is. And from this, we I derived... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Welcome, uh, Brigadier Daya. I was just recounting about the whole affair. There he is. So, from that particular thing, I derived this quadrilateral. And what does this quadrilateral say? Four ends of the quadrilateral USA, China, India, and Russia. I've used this quadrilateral extensively for the, for the past six months. Many of you are familiar with it. And it very clearly tells that USA and India are along one diagonal attracted to each other. And similarly, uh, Russia and uh, China are attracted to each other. Uh, just as a, before I proceed further, if any one of you has put on his, uh, you know, iPhone on or your mobile on, please put it off because there's a resounding coming through that. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, 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 he's doing it. He's doing it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are we here? Are we here? No, no, no. It's no, not okay. Romel, Romel, you've got two devices on. One, one has to be switched off, please. Should I switch on the... I, I you, you switch off one device. Oh, yeah. I've switched off that. Okay, now now it's fine. Now it's fine. Look. Okay, yeah, now, now it's clear. fine. Yeah, yes, now it's please. clear. Fine. Yeah. So we're looking at this quadrilateral where India and uh, USA in the recent <laughs> times, a lot of bonhomie. And simultaneously, the Russia-China equation has also been strengthening. All was fine. But... But we've had some problems with USA, the Pannu Nijar case, Bangladesh, and certain uh, differences of opinion are now appearing, especially in the Western press, and it's being echoed in our own media. Right? And now people are talking of India being an illiberal democracy. And uh, to the extent they're saying this is not the India we knew. But then. China and USSR are also defying history. They were never great friends. But today you see a different kind of a bonhomie. With this kind of a thing, and with the multi multiple conflicts which have erupted all over, whether it's in the Ukraine or in uh, you know the West Asia, right, and the increasing tensions in South China Sea and the West China East China Sea. You find that USA is virtually fighting uh, uh, almost a lone hand battle against both these. Something which many people said should be avoided. It is in this context 
that we are going to uh, discuss this whole thing of china versus uh, china plus russia vis-a-vis usa the overall global tension which is going on and in this where does india stand it's a major question which we have to ask for ourselves because we are also in the equation of this uh, balance of power we are considered a balancing power in many constructs global constructs plus we are the fastest growing economy today in the world it puts us in a, in a spot right and we'll discuss all this so what we'll do is i'll invite each speaker to spend 5 minutes on this topic and this conundrum which we are facing and then we'll get into uh, subsets of this problem and discuss it sub- uh, subsequently the first person i request to speak is uh, brigada arun saigal so all yours uh, please take it on thank you very much it's an honor to be on sir sir, sir sorry there is still some disturbance coming about the, uh, yes. someone has a uh, a second device on just check please on me hello i am okay okay i would request everyone else except uh, uh, brigada saigal to yes, mute your mute yeah okay thank you very much for this honor and uh, to start my presentation can i just have the slides please so i have got couple of of slides to indicate to you how the global geopolitical system is evolving as we are nearing the end of 2023 and entering 2024 uh, a, a, a period of great consequence Uh, uh that we are going to enter so let me have the first slide please okay i don't know what happened but uh, okay this is the evolving geopolitical system as far as the united states is concerned along with its partners europe it looks at the world from a unipolarity point of view it is still living in the past it believes that it's it's is a massive economic political and military power which has got a global heft and therefore it has it has the for the security and the peace and the rule based order in the global system it has to remain the primary unipolar player in the global system the challenging this notion of american unipolarity is the china's rise china rise is China is an ambitious power it believes that its manifest destiny lies to be a global player it considers itself at this point in time a key challenger to the united states but does not believe that it can overtake united states so the united states and china are two competitive powers and are trying to uh five i mean well t- they are trying to be uh, a, a global contestants primarily because the the chinese believe that it is imperative that to change the global system to the destiny of a uh, 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 community of common destiny so that basically what they are trying to say is that the westphalian order which was created post uh second world war which has continued all along has lived is is dying time has come to evolve a new system you cannot world cannot live with the un- unilateralism economic unilateralism military unilateralism of the west and therefore there needs to be a change so this is a change uh that the chinese are trying to fight against is important to understand is that china per se given the geographical location does not pose a direct challenge to united states but what it does is it is it is pushing for a geopolitical challenge so this is an important aspect so the so, so in as far as the chinese are concerned in their concept of thinking is that the route to the global power lies through the indo pacific 
at that extent, the first area of Chinese interest lies in undermining the United States' influence and power in the in East Asia, where they are a dominant player and trying to carve out a, a, a very, very strong architecture, a security architecture based on its allies and partners. The third element of this equation is the tripolar world, Russia. Now, situation as far as Russia is concerned, and I'm talking about today, is that the Ukraine war is on a standstill. There is, the Russians today are controlling about 25% of the Ukraine territory. Ukraine does not have the have to take it over to recoup this. The, the counteroffensive has failed. European Union, NATO are benefit of adequate military capacity or capability to pump in into Ukraine to, to bolster Ukrainian military or its defensive capacities. As United States enters into the into its last year of its political battle for the next presidency, it is losing interest in Ukraine. That is why you find the, Mr. Zelensky rushing off to America for some kind of assistance. But as you note, know, that the Republicans are absolutely deadly against it. And if Trump comes to power, this is going to be a difficult issue. So what is the situation? The situation is that the European alliance system of the United States is becoming weak, incapable of supporting its larger geostrategic interests. Russia is, is in, a, in a stalemate, but a positive stalemate, both in terms of military capacity and its economic capacity. Along with China, they are becoming a formidable opponent to the US-led unipolar system. Now, added to that are the middle powers. And that's where big countries like India comes in. Middle powers are shaping big part forces, particularly in terms of regional influences. For, in, for India, if you take India, for example, India is uh, an important partner and a player in, in Indo-Pacific and, in fact, in Asia. We have a strong economy, strong military power, strong capabilities. And as the time comes, we will become a strong influencer, even in the maritime domain, particularly across the Malacca Strait into the South China Sea. So the point which important lies is this. And similarly, Indonesia is an important player. And if you go down, then Vietnam is an important player. So these middle powers are shaping the big power discourse. And they cannot be overlooked and their interests cannot be overlooked. There are more. If you go down the Middle East, there is Saudi Arabia. Even a small country like UAE is an important player because of its economic uh, capabilities. So this is the system that is currently uh, available. I mean, that's the interplay between these players is, is defines the current global political system. Next slide, please. So where are the alignments? As far as United States is concerned, it has got alliances in Europe, it has got allies in Asia, and it has got some key strategic partners. And one of them is also India. The United States, as I mentioned, is, is contesting and containing China. It is contesting and containing Russia. But in all these spheres, it is having difficulties. The Chinese are concerned is that China and Russia are, are, are strong partners. I will not say strong, they are partners. They are partners driven by their own needs and perception. Chinese look at Russia from two perspectives. Chinese look at Russia from perspective that if Russia does, remains a strong and a credible Eastern European power, it remains a challenger to the United States. And to that extent, the United States power and influence is not simply pushed against China. It gets diffused 
between China and Russia. And that makes and with the United States having weak alliance systems in NATO, it, it becomes vulnerable and its ability to impose will is that much contest contained. Next is Russia. Russia again will play a central role not only in vis-a-vis -vis China, but also in East Asia. With, with the kind of stalemate that is now happening, the, the Russians are now going to emerge slowly and steadily a regional balancer for Eastern Europe. And you always already see what the Hungary and other, other countries are trying to do. So if Russia becomes a regional balancer, from the Russian perspective, it becomes a strong player in managing European security, not the Western European security, but certainly a player in the Eastern European security. And so this is how the alignment of global powers is going to take place. India as a, as a strong power and a middle power has a role to play as a, as a strategic partner in the United States, got a role to play as a, as a, as a close early erstwhile partner, but as yet a strategic partner of Russia. And India will has, has a, a contextual relationship with China. If you notice an interesting factor, if you notice in the recent months, China has reached out to everybody. China has reached out to the United States. China has reached out to on 25th November. China had a meeting in Busan, in Korea. Where, where, uh, it, it went into a discussion with uh, Korea and Japan to to restart the security dialogue. But there is one country in the global system which is a, which is a credible country, which is an important country, which uh, the, the Chinese are not reached out to, is Russia. Uh, sorry, India. So all these developments then again have to be taken in account of what is happening in the three wars. Uh, Ukraine, uh, West Asia, as well as uh, India. I mean, sorry, in uh, Chinese assertions. So we leave it at that. I will. I leave it at that. So from my perspective, this is the global power play that is taking place at this particular point in time, and I'll be happy to answer any questions if they come up. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, sir, uh, for the alignments which you have uh, put out. Very clearly at the end, you said India is the, a strategic power which is of great importance to USA and Russia and also China. The only thing which you highlighted is while China is reaching out to USA and Russia, it's not yet reaching out to India. So we'll see how it goes. And I'll get back to this quadrilateral for what it's worth. And we'll examine India's position from this quadrilateral. If you look at this quadrilateral carefully, without looking at the you know larger octagon or beyond the octagon, which the ambassador had uh, mentioned, this this quadrilateral has a few triangles. Now these triangles are, if I may say, one is the Russia-India-China triangle, right? Where India's position has to be seen in the light of the improving Russia-China relationship, even if it's transactional. And this transaction could well last into the next decade. Right. The second transaction which we have to see, the triangle which we have to see in this, is the US, China, and India relationship, which is the big relationship the way I look at it. Right. Because the big competition is between uh, India and China, and the big balancer in between is, of course, uh, you know, India. And then there's another triangle, and that's a critical triangle. And that's a cr triangle which not many of us understand fully. And that triangle is the Russia, uh, China, uh, sorry, Russia, USA, and India triangle, right? We, where we have to balance out these two, uh, you know, guys who are on the opposite sides, when we have very good equations with them. And what's more, there is a view in the West itself that it is high time we became friends, or if not friends, at least sideline US, uh, Russia, keep it neutral, wean it away from USA to uh, China to the extent possible, so that we can focus on China. 
So this triangle is also pretty critical and use, uh, interesting and where India has a critical role to play. So we'll examine these three triangles. I'll start with the first triangle, which is Russia, USA, and India. And for this, I'd request uh, Brigadier Arun Segal, sir, your views on this. Thank you, General Shankar. Uh, it's a very interesting triangle. Uh, let me start by saying that India stands at the conical top of this triangle. You put India on the top and relate India and United States and India and Russia, uh, then the equations become very uh, easy to understand. Essentially speaking, India and Russia had very good relations. Recently, even the foreign minister said that uh, EM said that Russia has been very supportive to us in large number of contingencies, criticalities. Whenever we are in trouble, 71, every time. Russia has been a great supporter for us uh, for in our uh, armament supplies and as well as our strategic uh, arena, particularly in the space arena. Uh, in current scenario, it is the greatest provider to us of, uh, of uh, petroleum and energy products saving us close to about 30 percent of our gd i mean our uh, investments in, in this region so russia has been a very very important and player for india the question basically is this is that india also at the same time have a very consequential relationship with the united states given the prevailing balance of power in the global system from Indian perspective, Russia is can be looked upon as a great supporter, an intrinsic supporter. But at, from the from the emerging geopolitics point of view, United States is our consequential partner, like I said, because it's important to understand this differential. From our perspective, as far as Russia is concerned, it will continue to supply our weapons, it continue to support our, uh, 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 us in various international fora. Also, Russia can play a balancing role vis-a-vis -vis our relationship with China, which it does. Uh, and, and also, the fact is that Russia uh, and India uh, can play a role uh, even in, um, in, in Middle East and, and in dealing with Iran and issues like that. So Russia can, is an important player. And also in Central Asia, Russia is an important partner for India, where there is a competition between Russia and China. So Russia has a multiple uh, uh, perspectives of India's support. As far as United States is concerned, why is India chosen to make United States the most consequential partner? There is one logic to it. The logic basically is this, like I said, China is the main factor. We and United States both face the same challenge. We face the same challenge in the same region. As far as China is concerned, it is uncompromising on us. We need to understand this. They are uncompromising on us. They are uncompromising for us because primarily they believe in two things. One is India is becoming a close strategic partner of the United States. To that extent, it is becoming a source of, uh, of, of a combined challenge. The number two is India's own growth and comprehensive national park. As India's comprehensive national park grows, as we become a strong military, economic, technological power, we will seek our space in Asia. Like I said, Asia is the fulcrum for Chinese global rise. As long as China does not control Asia, or does not become an all pervasive power in Asia, it cannot play a global role. That's the look at. Please understand one thing: China remains a continental power with a strong navy. Its eastern fulcrum is controlled by the first island chain, which can, cannot go out. And if you notice, why Americans and, and others are going gung ho about the Philippines is primarily to close the one route which the Chinese could have utilized for entry into Western Pacific. So we 
as far as uh, india is concerned india is the western falcon the india controls the western falcon united states and alliance comes the eastern falcon china is a contained power in this region and china has to fight it out and that's why the competition will remain intrinsic in the pacific region come what may in 2024 and till 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 I, in my view till late into the middle of next decade that's important part where does russia come in russia unfortunately has to stand on two stools like i mentioned this is strong it it is because of the united states factor and the fact that the united states have never accepted russia i call russia as the united states pakistan uh, so as far as america is concerned they will never accept russia as a, as a, as a great power so, so therefore there is a common concerns between russia and and china and they are like i mentioned they they cover each other in europe as well as in asia to that extent and you are aware of the fact like i mentioned earlier also that they have combining together the forces even in the east china sea they have had seven exercises this year where uh, combining both air power and maritime power the most important element which is now emerging is the china's three ocean strategy the chinese three ocean strategy is there is one ocean is the pacific second is the indian ocean the third is the arctic the centrality of the arctic is becoming very clear to the chinese chinese are very prescient people they are already thinking in those terms and that is where china and russia becomes close partner if they start controlling the arctic route that will have a further impact on the on, on the power equations so from india perspective between the two if i were to weigh it down as things stand today i will put our relationship with united states is about 60% because united states is also helping us develop advanced technologies uh, it's providing us uh, advanced technological weapon systems we are being integrated into the isrs these things are not simple we we, we don't understand uh, we have to uh, comprehend this what uh, what was the real time intelligence and these things kind of things be we we talk about uh, g414 engine do you know in all these years of our relationship with russia there have never been a technology transfer even in brahmos the ramjet technology is still purchased from russia so is i'm not cribbing about russia but the point we have to have is you have to get the realities right they gave us a cryogenic engine who but we had to remanufacture the cryogenic engine because of the sanction so the russians help us they have helped us in a nuclear submarine program yes but the reactors we had to buy so the question basically is this that it is 60% on the russia on the american side it is becoming 40 i would put it 35 65 35 that's kind of relationship with russia and rush but but important thing is this that india will despite whatever happens and this is a clarity which has been given to the americans americans understand it india will remain a strong supporter and a partner with russia there will be a strategic construct there would be a, a, a common areas of of our convergences and and there will be central asia be it iran be it uh, uh even uh, uh, going into east asia as we further develop so these are the issues that are important so to 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 sum up in in this triangle from an indian perspective america is a heavier partner than russia nevertheless russia is an also a very important partner thank you thank thank you sir you i think you made two very important points at, at the cost of reinforcing it 
uh, I'd like to reinforce it. Uh, one, China is uh, an un is uncompromising on India, which has come out loud and clear across all three panelists who have spoken. And the second thing which you said, in this triangle of Russia, USA and India, India will have to maintain good relations with Russia and USA. It is 65 to 60 to 65% with USA and 35 to 40% with Russia. We'll have to continue with it. We don't have a choice, irrespective of the equations between Russia and China. 